I would like to present to you Michelle Sanver. Uh, she is the president of PHP Women, and she works for a company called Leap in uh, based in Zurich. She's a great advocate of open source and a wonderful person. So please welcome Michelle Sanver. Thank you. This was a stressful start, which doesn't help because I have stage fright. Uh, so ignore my shaking. Just ignore it. It won't affect the presentation too much. Like Code Rabbi said, learn the most, sharing your knowledge with others. So yay, we here we are. Whoops. Let's not jump. So let's find out some things about you. Are you a pure PHP developer? Uh, OK. Do you use Bower already? Anyone? Couple of people. Do you use Gulp already? Few people, good. Other package managers or task runners? OK. Do you do it manually or not at all if you do front end? OK. This talk is entry level. So if you are familiar with Gulp and Bower and you know what task runners are and package managers, you probably should go to the other track. Or you can enjoy this cute kitten picture. <laughs> and here's a picture of me with a dragon. So who am I? Who am I? As said, I'm co-president of PHP Women. It's an awesome user group, here to support everyone and support a friendly community. We sell elephants on shop.phpwomen.org that goes to sending people to conferences and scholarships. If you're wondering about my accents, they're somewhere from here, take your pick. I'm uh, sweet, from Sweden and I'm half Danish. I live in Switzerland and I lived six years in Netherlands. In Switzerland, I work for Leap. And actually, I'm not a front-end developer. I'm a back-end developer. And that means I don't have to touch a single line of CSS. That's amazing. I don't need to care about Internet Explorer incompatibility issues. But I worked on this front-end project, and in there, I introduced Bower and Gulp. Now I'm actually back to only doing back-end. But I thought I would still share this technology because I'm so passionate about it, and I think you should know about it, too. A disclaimer, there's a lot of good solutions out there. And in the JavaScript world, everything changes in a flick of a finger. Oh, we have a new library. Now something else is cool. But I like this solution. So here are my 10 steps to a great front-end workflow in your chosen PHP framework. So in this talk, I focus on you as a PHP developer learning how to do front-end. But if you want to help me, this talk is open source. So after every step, you can contribute to my talk or ask questions. Step one, install whatever framework. Step two, use Power to install JavaScript dependencies of choice. Step three, make some views. Step four, style them with a the CSS framework of show choice. Step five, use scope to concatenate, move, and minify. Step six, build the CSS files. Step seven, care about versioning. Step eight, get the vendor files. Step nine, set up a watch for fluid development. Step 10, deploy. Questions? <laughs> OK, so that's what I'm going to talk about in this presentation. Let's start with installing a framework. Yeah. Let's go to step two. <laughs> Use Power to install JavaScript dependencies of choice. So before package managers, we had to download zip files. We had to go somewhere and see, OK, we can use this zip file, or we had to use CDNs. And it wasn't really that handy to manage dependencies. It was trial and error which versions you should have, and you never really knew. 
it got annoying after a while, and that's why I started looking for other solutions. Package managers are the solution. They're the composer of JavaScript. So I chose to go with Bower for now, but there's many others, including NPM itself. I'll compare a little bit in a while. So installing Bower is super, super easy. You have to have a node installed and do NPM in it to generate your package JSON file. Here, with this command, sudo npm install minus g power, you have it installed globally. But it is usually advised to install it locally, which you do with this command, minus minus save dev. And now you have it in this nice directory. You probably want to create an alias as well. So now if you run npm exec bower with this command, after putting this in your path, you can simply execute it, run it, and it's amazing. Now, every project in bower is an installable library. To start using bower, you have to write bower in it. And this will walk you through a list of steps and questions that you have to do. Most of the questions are quite obvious, but let's walk through them because some may be a little bit less obvious. So the main file is the entry point of your application. It's usually something like index.php or whatever your entry point is. What types of modules does this package expose? We're not building our own libraries, so we're not using this. If we are, we would say which modules it exposes here. Set currently install components as dependencies. So this will add them to bower.json. And this, you want to say yes, because it ignores things like the bower components or test directory. It's very rare that you would not want to ignore these things. Would you like to mark this package as private, which prevents it from being accidentally published to the registry? Well, yes, 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 yes. You don't want to accidentally have your package in the registry before it's even done. That's kind of awkward. So yes, please, unless you want to, of course. So now we have a generated bower.json file. And with this file, we can start installing things. It's really, really easy with a simple command. Bower install minus minus save, and then we can add all the things we want to install. In this case, I wanted jQuery and Bootstrap. And then we get this nice generated dependencies. We see in bower.json, we didn't even specify a version, but it has it in there by default for us. Nice, it took the latest ones by then. And then we do Bower install to install everything after a fresh checkout. So sometimes you want to change the root folder, and you can do that by specifying this directory. The reason you want to do this is that it's not always the folder you want to have it in. But after doing that, you have to remove and install your components. You do that by simply wiping them from the disk and then do a power install again. And now, if you want to update to a new version, it's so much easier, no more zip files. Power update bootstrap, done. As I said, no more zip files. Power gives us complete control, which is really, really cool. And now you can start referencing the files wherever you place them, in your HTML files. I think Bower is really cool, and that's basically all there is to it. Install, update, enjoy it. But what happens if you need to install two versions of jQuery if you have really complex dependencies? Bower is a flat structure. You can't have two versions of the same thing. So 
then you might not want to use Power. You can use something called Browserify, which is a plugin to NPM. So with Browserify, you bundle everything into one bundle, and then you use that bundle. So basically, you use the Browserify browse verify command, and it will recursively bundle everything from beer.js to drinks.js. And then you can simply use the drinks.js as you want. It's nice and easy, good to use, and with these bundles, it means that you can have as many versions of jQuery or whatever you want. With browse verify, you specify your requirements in the files themselves, and that's the way they compile. And of course, installing your packages such as uh, beer.js or whatever it would be, you would need to do via npm. So it's npm install bootstrap, for instance. What would I use? What do I use? Right now, we'll see. I think Bower is really cool, but it depends on your use case. Browserify means that you can have a lot of bundles with a lot of jQuery, 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 jQuery. And in my personal opinion, I think you shouldn't have too much JavaScript that the client has to download. So I think Bower is better in that case that you don't need it. But sometimes there's needs. Our current compromise that we do in the project I worked for is that we use NPM for development tools. You will see one of them soon, which is Gulp. And we use Bower client side, so jQuery, Bootstrap, everything you need on the client. So questions, contributions? Cool. No questions about Bower? You can ask again later. So that leads us to step three. Let's make some views. It's actually really, really easy now that we have all of our dependencies. It's simple HTML, links, scripts. We just use it in this bootstrap. So that was step three. And now we can start styling. That's something I don't do anymore, and I'm really happy about it. And if someone likes styling, I'm really happy for you. <laughs> and um, we are using SAS, which makes everything a lot easier. But that means that we need to pre-process our JavaScript. SAS has variables that you actually need to put into the CSS files, and you need to compile SAS. And SAS also has a lot of neat things for backwards compatibility, especially if you use it together with Compass. So start styling, have fun. Questions about SAS? Okay. So that leads us to Gulp. You can use Gulp to concatenate, move and minify scripts and CSS. And actually, you can do anything in Gulp, because Gulp is a task runner, and you can do literally, literally, well, almost anything with it, but that doesn't mean you should. A lot of you have probably heard of Grunt before. Anyone in here used Grunt? OK, about a third of you. As you know, Grunt is config-based, but Gulp is module-based which means in Grunt you have to define a config, while in Gulp you use your single modules, and you just take what you need and you use them. It's really, really nice. Installation is just like Power. npm install minus g Gulp for globally and locally that way, and you can make your path, etc., as you wish. So let's look at our first Gulp task. First, we need the plugins. So here, I want to do some concatenation, uglifying. I want to 
minify the CSS and flatten everything. Gulp is all about piping. So everything you do, you will define a task and then pipe everything you want to do through it. Here's a typical task. We call this task styles. So we pipe CSS min, which is the plugin that we saw, and then we pipe concat, and we give it a variable, which is main.css. So we concatenate to that.